Hi folks, thanks for joining me again. Very, very welcome to see another watercolour demonstration. I'm Stephen Cronin, um, and this today I've done a, like a seascape, got some sort of dark, moody seascape. You see the boats there, reflections in the water. And I've just done it quite dark and try to emphasise this light in the sky, reflected in the water below. So let me show you the, the materials I've used. So the palettes I've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, and light red. Um, and then the brushes, I used quite a few brushes on this one, I think most of it done with a large hake. I did use a flat brush, a couple of little flats, got a sword liner down there and then a couple of riggers, a zero and a size three. I haven't mentioned books for a while, this, uh, this is my most recent one, been out for a while now, painting loose landscapes in watercolour by myself and it's the same, same style you've been seeing me do for a while now, just broken down into step by step guide just to help you through each painting um, now I've got a new bookshop now I'll quickly show you that and I've, I've basically I've switched from Amazon now to blurb who actually published the book so basically it just works out um, a bit cheaper and also um, if I just click on the one I've just showed you the most recent book you can see there's a PDF version of every book as well and the soft they are slightly slightly cheap because I'm printing direct now from the from the um, publisher. There's no third party like Amazon, so I can sell them slightly cheaper. Plus, I can sell the the digital PDF version as well of each book. So hopefully, it'll, it's better all round for everyone. I think. So, just kicking this one off as always with a just clean water straight out of the jar. Um, just basically stops the paper from going all crinkly plus all these uh, washes in the sky and below will sort of soften off so there's no hard edges so I'm just starting off with a bit of raw sienna a bit of lizard and crimson in there as well a bit of ultramarine, light red on the other side just trying to get some sort of random shapes and colours and patterns and contrasts and things in the sky but always at the back of my mind I want to keep that, I want to preserve the light in that um, central region of the sky and also if you can see at the bottom where I've sort of preserved, I, I, as I was brushing in from either side in the water area at the bottom, bottom third, of, you can see where I've just stopped, just just short of the centre. So that's going to be our light source, so imagine the light in the middle of the sky shining down onto the sea and it just gives a nice, nice, um, it's just a nice effect. So. Just using a large run Ranson hike here and just adding a bit more colour over the top, just trying to strengthen it a little bit. Um, I'll dry it and just add a few, a, 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 sort of more, another wash in a bit, just over the top of it. But for now, I'm just putting in the land, the land mass. So I've just mixed all the darks together, which are predominantly the, the, the light red, the ultramarine, a little bit of Payne's grey, these are in crimson. I don't think I used the burnt umber on this one, but that makes up the land mass and also just brushing in from the sides again just because I, I want it I want it nice and dark, sort of dark and moody. Because the the darker the sort of uh, uh, surrounding areas, the lighter that light in the middle will, will appear. So because the paper stretched a little bit now, I'm just pulling it tight, just refixing it with those clips and just getting it flat against the, the plywood. So basically the idea now of drying it is I want to sort of fix in place everything I've done so far. So that will sort of stay in place, there, well there or there about, it won't be perfect but drying it will help that stay in place so then I can re-wet it and then put some more washes over the top of it and just it helps sort of create sort of depth and, and more interest and more lots of, lots of subtle variations. So I'm just using the, the Mr. Spray now. Um, incident, that's just a, a, a hairdresser spray. Um, you can get them on Amazon. If you just, if you just search for um, hairdresser's Mr. Spray, I think it is, something like that. You'll, you'll see them. So I've just re re-wet the sky now. I'm just adding on some bit of raw sienna. And then a bit of raw sienna, a bit of, a bit of light red as well. And this is all just trying to create 
sort of subtle variations. Don't worry too much about paint dripping down the page and all that. I mean, I got mine at almost at 90 degrees. So it is, it is quite susceptible to, to gravity and water and paint running down the page, but it's all part of the fun. Now going really dark now, really whacking it in nice and dark, dark both in the sky and just using those same colours down below. Um, But each time I brush it in, I'm just being careful not to go over that light area, just preserving that bit of light. So I've just added a bit of ultramarine to everything now, and just strengthening where that sort of land mass is now in the distance, just to ask, act as our sort of backdrop to the scene. And that will sort of soften off a little bit as it dries, because the paper is still a little bit wet at the moment. Adding a few clouds here and there, using the same colours. And then just continually just strengthening that sea area. And you can see as the sea goes darker and darker, that light bit in the middle come, becomes sort of lighter and lighter and just pops more. And then I'll just pop some boats where that light bit is just to help them stand out a little bit better. So so at this point, I think well, that, that's, that's about as much as I can do now. The paper started to dry again, so all I could really do is dry it and then just go through the same process again. So dry it, fix what I've just done. Remember, every time you dry it, you're sort of fixing what you've already done so that you can then re-wet it and then add a bit more over the top, a few more washes, and each time you're just sort of creating more and more depth and, and, and interest and, and sort of variations in the colours and the tones and the contrast and all this that and the other. So again I've used the Mr Spray. I could wet it with the brush but I'd be, it, it'd be more likelihood of me disturbing the paint that's already on the paper. That's why I prefer to use the Mister because it doesn't disturb the paint as much. So again I've gone in, always starting with the lightest colours. Starting with the lightest and then we can always go darker. Can't do it the other way around really in watercolour. So at this point I just want to open up that lighter area in the sky. So I'll just use a, a, just a clean damp brush. And the same below as well. And I say damp, I mean just damp. Don't want it covered in water because otherwise it will, with the paper already wet. If there, was too, if there was more water on the brush it would be all over the place. So again, I'm trying to go in really strong there. So lots of light reds and ultramarines going up in the sky. But again, remember, I mean, it looks a bit gaudy at the moment, but it will, it will soften off and just the effect will become a little, little more subtle as it softens off and the paper dries. So just strengthening again that land mass and the water just brushing it in and because I wet that area in the middle of the water as I brush up to the centre now you can see how the, 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 there's no hard edges again now just nice and soft which is what I was trying to do so again I just use the clean damp brush just to soften off some of these areas just, just above the horizon line to bring that light out In with some darker clouds, a bit more light red, paints, grey, ultramarine, lizarding crimsons, bringing some of those clouds now, just just down just above the horizon, just into that light area, just above the, the land that I've just created. And 
again just just strengthening those darks and you can see how the darker it gets the more the light pops so just refixing the paper just again where it's stretched a little bit just getting it flat against the board and then reclipping it So now I've got the card and I think it's time to start scraping in the rocks. So I'm just using the corner of a plastic card and I'm just trying to just level it out a little bit with the brush. I'm just trying to decide do I want to keep that, do I want to paint over it. But I'm, I'm fairly happy how the rocks have turned out so I'll leave those in place. Now I'm switching to a flat brush. Part of the reason, because my hake's so worn, I can't get a sharp edge with it now. So I'm doing that with the hake, with the, the little flat brush, three quarter inch flat. Um, the only trouble, I put these in too early. Because the paper's still damp, I'm putting these marks in now and they're just spreading a little bit. I should have I dried it really, or added a little drier. Because would, would have been sort of narrower strokes then. It hasn't worked out too bad. I'm yeah, just adding a few darks over on the left, but try not to overdo it. It's a, it's a three quarter inch flat, that brush. Just a standard brush, I don't think there's anything special about it. I've had it for years and years now. So I'm back out with the with the card. Just seeing what other sort of rock effects. Um, so I brought them right down to the foreground, but I've looked at it now and thought, I think I've overdone it a bit here. So at this point I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to have to paint over some of these. There's, there's just too much, too many rocks. So I ate with the flat brush. Dark mix on the brush and then just, just paint over the majority of those rocks. Just leaving the odd little bit here and there, just odd little highlights. Just trying to blend it in a bit. Now I just want to blend in the bottom of the sky as well and above just the, the, that gap between the bottom of the darks in the sky and then just above the horizon. So I'm just using a, a, a very a sort of dry clean brush now. Just to create some sort of white cloud effect at the bottom. Just to make sure there's a gap between the, 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 the land and the sky. Just getting the paper flat again. And I'm sort of starting to think now, maybe it's time to put the boats in there. So just giving it a quick dry. I'm thinking the boats would look good just, just where that light is in the sky. I don't want them all sort of central, so I'll just put maybe one, maybe one or two in the middle there, and then the, the rest just, just left of centre, so the majority of them are just, just off centre. Um, sort of focal points right in the middle of the painting always look a bit not, not, not quite right remember the rule of thirds so just put on your put your focal points on the intersections of the thirds so what I'm thinking is I want to get these boats in dark so that they're silhouette against the sky but Looking at the finished painting, I, I put them in too dark. That's why I was faffing around for a while. With, with the rocks and things near, next to the edges of the boats. I was trying to match the tones, but 
I think I've just used a bit too much Payne's Grey. I think there was too much paint on the brush as well, was it was another problem I had. See, the, I think the mix was too watery, I wasn't getting a, a nice sharp edge. So like I was trying to say now, I think the boat, the, the, see, if you see the, the tonal value of that boat now, it's, it's not matching the tones around it, it's, it's too dark, I should have done it a little bit lighter so that it blended in a bit better. So next time I do one like this, it's something I'll have to bear in mind. So always remember to do the reflections as well, just pop the reflections in as soon as you've done the boat so you don't forget. See because there was because the mix was too watery, it was it was too dark and it was too watery, that's why I can't otherwise I would have been able to get a sharper edge, especially on the masts. Because they would have come off a little bit narrower. See, another, another, and then another thing I do, sort of automatic without even thinking, you see how the, how the boats are all equally spaced. It always looks rubbish when they're equally spaced. Like that. Doesn't look natural. So that's why I've started, see that, that's why I, that's why I put that one just in there. That mast in the distance behind it. Just, just so that all the boats weren't equally spaced. And then I'll do, I'll do a few more like that just to sort of randomise it a little bit better. But you can see even that, that one then, it's almost equally distant again. I must pay a bit more attention to that. That's why I've stuck one there in the middle again, just to sort of separate them again. And this final one, and again, you can see, look, I'm, I'm sort of doing it, it's almost subconscious again. I've put it the same distance again. That's why, again, I put one in the background to break it up. I think now I'm starting to think, hang on, I've put these in a little bit too dark, so I'm going to have to start trying to match, put something in alongside it to match the tone, so it tries, it tries to blend it in a little bit better. That's what I thought on the right hand side now, I'll have to put some rocks or something, that same, that same dark tone. First, just making a few sort of random lines and marks down in the foreground area, and I'll just switch to the rigger, just the the little rigger brush now, just just to give a sort of subtle hint of some rigging on the on the uh, on the boats. Just running a few lines down from the masts. Just a few little details here and there. Nothing nothing too much. And then maybe in a minute I'll pop a few in the water as well. Just a few, just just random lines and marks. They don't mean anything in particular. So 
So this is where I've, I'm thinking now that those boats are a bit dark. So I'm going to have to put some rocks or something to try and sort of match the tones. So that's why I've started putting in these dark sections now on the on this right hand side. So I put that in dark, and I'm thinking now well, I could maybe try and scrape, get the card out, and maybe scrape a few rocks in there. But they've come out pretty very sort of basically because the the paint underneath it was dry, so it was difficult. Couldn't really get down to the white of the paper. I was thinking mate the masts don't quite look high enough so I thought well I'll just extend them slightly just get the rigger out again just make the mast a little bit higher so back so I'll just give that a quick dry it was, I just wanted to try and, and match. I thought I'd just I'll do some on the left, the left of the boats as well. Maybe put a few rocks and things over there, but without the scrape. And I think, but at this point, I think I've done enough scrape. I don't want to do any more. So just just a few dark marks over on the left to again just try and help blend it in a little bit better. But first. Just pop a few birds in. So just to do back into that dark mix, and I'm just going to pop a few seagulls. But that last one I did, I did it. Why? I don't know why I did it so big. And as soon as I saw it, I thought no, I'm, I'm going to have to get rid of that. So just using a, a, a damp, clean brush, just to just to wet the paint that I've just done, and then I can just take that off with a tissue. Use the tissue as an eraser. It's just a simple way of um, just, just removing little marks that you've done. Just wet them with a damp brush and then just use a tissue to remove the pines. So I'm using the sword liner now with a dark mix on it and you see I'm just thinking maybe put a few rocks over on that left again just to just to put that sort of that whole line from where the boats are from the left to the right just just darken that whole section just to just to blend it in a bit I wouldn't really have I wouldn't need to do have done any of this but I just put the boats in using the same tones as, as what was already there but it's not the end of the world. Now I just want to do a few more little marks here and there. Just just to add areas of, of interest, just little things. And so I'm calling that one done. So just sign my name, date it, and I'm just going to call that one finished. So 
So here's the finished painting in the mains. So if we go and have a closer look at it. So the main thing I was trying to do was create an area of light in the sky, which was then reflected in the water. That's why I was sort of darkening it from either side to make the light more apparent. Same with the sky as well, putting all these dark sections and clouds just to give that light a bit more oomph, make it stand out a little bit better. I deliberately put the birds in that area so they'd show up as well. Did the boats just slightly too dark, that's why I was just faffing around trying to sort of match the tones alongside it so it didn't so it just blended in a little bit bit better. Fair bit of scraping. I did paint over a little bit of it, but these ones didn't turn out too bad. And you can see how it looks as if the light from the sky is just catching the side of these rocks. And these closer ones in a little bit of a, sh a shadow. But it's just very, very simple. Just like a basic um, hole, and then just the mast, and then just very, very light touches with the rig, just to suggest a few um, ropes and whatnot. And then don't forget to pop the reflections in as well underneath. Simple way of doing boats, but it, it seems to work pretty well. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoy that. Thanks always for watching for your support. Remember, join me over at patreoncom Stephen Crony if you get the chance. You'd be very welcome over there. Lots more videos, the community page, and, and lots to keep you occupied. So, till next time, keep practicing. If you've got any questions, please ask, and I'll see you again soon.